2019 is the year I pledged to play through the Castlevania franchise and record my journey through these vlogs, culminating in one big video review at the end. Here we go with entry 14, Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance. Welcome back to another Castlevania Diaries, the second one for the Game Boy Advance, and now we're looking at Harmony of Dissonance. There's, there's, I don't, I'm not quite sure what dissonance means, but if, if it means music that's out of tune, which is what it sounds like, boy, did they get that right on the head because the, this game is, it has a lot of good, but it, I think it's the one game I struggled with the most uh, in terms of number of streams. I'm pretty sure I played this game for a month and a half on stream to get through it because, okay, there's, there's a lot to unpack with this game. They've improved things from Circle of the Moon. The controls feel better. Um, they brought back the Belmonts. The uh scenery looks a little bit better there's a lot more bosses it feels a lot more like symphony of the night uh what other good things can i say before i absolutely destroy this game <clears throat> um it plays like a metroidvania you have two wonderful castles to explore um it's uh that that's about it that's about it that's that's all the good stuff you're gonna get for this game it's not too hard i forgot to say that the difficulty curve is fair and it's nice <clears throat> Now, where, oh my god, okay, the, the reason this game took me so long to get through is because it, it isn't designed in a way that guides the player. And I, I can really appreciate Metroidvania design today, seeing how an early one completely failed at guiding the player. So this game is littered with bosses. You have so many bosses and mid-bosses to fight, Sure, they're fun, they're, they actually are fun, but the bosses don't reward you with anything. Most of the time, they're just thrown there for the sake of having a boss. They don't give you like an upgrade or anything. So you're gonna be going all around this castle getting lost, and then a couple of hours in, just to spike up the fun, they add in a complete mirror castle. We're not even talking about a flipped castle, but two castles that are pretty much identical except for um, enemy placement and enemy types. And you can't easily change between the two castles because you can only do it through warp points. And you you have the same amount of bosses in each castle, but you have some items in one castle that gets you through the other castle. It's a nightmare to navigate. It's just really, really boring. And thank God the, the difficulty is not too bad. So you can go around back and forth. Let me tell you one thing. In the last game, Circle of the Moon, you know, I was under leveled and the game wanted me to grind. In this game, that wasn't a problem. My level was right on because I was lost for so long, I ended up grinding because of that. Uh, this game, I'm, I won't lie, I needed a walkthrough at one point. It was getting ridiculous. I was going around everywhere around this castle. Usually on a Metroidvania, you, you look at the map and you go to where the map is not uncovered and that usually leads to the next part of where you need to go. In this game, they added cryptic components to it and I just couldn't like it, it was so complex to think about how to explore uh, uh, if you're in castle a how to get to castle b a certain ways and everywhere you went was roadblock 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 you, it kept being obvious you needed things but it wasn't obvious where you got those things so I needed a walkthrough to get the items to progress specifically the midway point once I got uh, through that everything else kind of collapsed so it's not a complete failure, but they definitely could have polished off some of the design in the middle. And then, while you're lost, your ears are just getting attacked with probably what is the most, the worst soundtrack of any Castlevania game. And if there's one thing Castlevania should be known for and is great, is its soundtrack. It has wonderful, beautiful, atmospheric music, and I don't know what they did wrong, but in this one, it just sounds like a bunch of raccoons are fighting in your ear for your whole playthrough. So, not a good time. I'm glad that they got rid of the card system. Uh, in in place of that, they brought back a, um, a book. Uh, you, you can find different books that give your uh, whip and secondary items different magical spells. So there's like a fire book, an ice book, lightning book, and all that. And while, yeah, okay, it adds elemental powers to your whip where it really shines, 
is when uh, you pair that with your secondary items, which makes them do all sorts of crazy things. And I much preferred that impl implementation of magic over what they did in Circle of the Moon. Um, the they they also added the the dash, which uh, was in I think it was in Symphony of the Night, and that was great because I had to backtrack so much. So at least the fluidity of the movement was there. That felt good. <clears throat> they brought back the whole uh, Dracula parts that was in Simon's Quest, so you have to find all of Dracula's parts. Um, the the story, uh, the story's not so, I don't know, I didn't care about the story. So I find in the, in the Game Boy Advance ones, they're really playing up, having a second dude who's like your best friend or your brother or something, and then Dracula possesses that guy, and he's kind of the, the asshole you have to beat, and then, you know, the veil is lifted, and it's like, oh, it's actually Dracula, so... <clears throat> On the Game Boy Advance series, at least, I'm finding that they're doing that more. I don't really care for it. Like, I already hate the guy from the beginning because they always start off with a snarky, like, how come you get the whip? I want to be strong and bad. And then it's like, I'm going to let Dracula corrupt me. And boom, here we go. Um, and then the story is all about pretty much saving everyone. And there's three different endings, and those are kind of cryptic too. Uh, the, the use of items and power-ups overall is cryptic. So you have your relics. The relics should be what gives you all of your upgrades. That's how it should be designed in my opinion. So if you want the double jump, that should be a relic. And it is in this one. However, a lot of the relics, a lot of powers that you would think would go in a relic are on some common items. For example, so you can upgrade your whip with different like tips. And there's one that lets you break through a certain kind of wall. And you can only do that if you equip that on your whip. And if you want to like interchange you lose that ability so you have to go through the menu so that feels really sloppy then you have these other another one it's like uh these boots that let you go like if you use the um the anti-gravity uh, jump or whatever it's called and you have those boots then you can break a wall in the ceiling that's not clear and a lot of that is just cryptic why wouldn't you make that a permanent upgrade as a relic and then there's these stupid bracelets which you get as part of the story and they take up like item slots in your inventory, but you have to equip them to open certain doors. And then the worst part is if you want to have the good ending out of the three endings, there's like a really good ending. You have to know to equip these two bracelets, which don't do anything special. They don't upgrade you. You get a way better items later in the game, but somehow you're supposed to know that you're, you have to equip these bracelets. You have to find all the Dracula parts, and then you have to fight this guy a second time after like you beat him the first time to get the good ending. It's just super cryptic, and it reminds me of the retro days, and those of you who know me know that I like to bash on retro games because there was so much bullshit back then, and they could get away with it because there was no better standards, and that to me is bullshit, and I don't like it because I like to feel empowered to figure out games, and a lot of these things were made in a way that you could only figure it out if you had a friend that knew it, and that friend probably knew from buying a magazine, a gaming magazine, or like they actually had a 56K modem and could connect to the internet. It was just weird. Anyways, a lot of good things. I have to say, Harmony of Dissonance is much better than Circle of the Moon. This is a game I actually don't mind playing around because I can navigate everything and it does feel like you progressively get stronger and that your levels actually matter and leveling up is worth it because the game does feel easier as you level up unlike Circle of the Moon. So overall, you know, it's a step in the right direction. And again, I'm told the Game Boy Advance series only get better, and so far, two is better than one. So I'm really hoping the third one is going to take all the lessons they learned from one and two and just make it better, because that, I don't think I've had a single Castlevania game where it started with love and turned into pure frustration at like midway in I was really enjoying whoops I was really enjoying this game until that halfway point where I was just lost and everything oh another thing you can collect uh items to decorate your room which is that's pretty cool I like that it's like a little side rewards you for exploring everything and you get to kind of decorate your room I wish it it actually lent more things I wish there was a way to teleport to your room easily instead of having to haul your ass through this massive castle which is just way too big not enough warp points they did bring in the whole um you you can you get healed after a boss which is something i complained about in circle of the moon so they brought that back um it it, it made kind of trudging through the castle a little bit more bearable and a little bit more fair so you know you get some good you get some bad 
and hopefully as we progress there's gonna be more good less bad so that's my thoughts on harmony of dissonance i think i've covered pretty much everything um overall dracula could have had a stronger presence like you have to go out of your way to fight dracula and he's not that difficult he was pretty easy to beat so um yeah it, it, just in a lot of things it doesn't this isn't a game that i'm going to retain as, as you know great memories of um i'm at about 98 percent complete so i will go back and 100 percent it i just need i just need to step away from this game because i was trapped in those two castles for so long i need to move on and like i said i'm gonna come back and 100 percent everything when i've got my sanity back or i've completely lost it i don't know how it's gonna go anyways join me next time as we wrap up the Game Boy Advance franchise, or the Game Boy Advance platform, and all the Castlevania games there, and then we're going to be going to the PlayStation 2 platform, back in 3D world. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, how that evolved from the N64. I'll see you on the next Castlevania Diaries, and until then, keep it classy.